Hi everyone and welcome back to the Art Life YouTube channel. check out the lesson prior to this one. I showed you some basic initial steps to using watercolors and we had a go at using water to our advantage to make the colors blend together nicely. Now, we're gonna get a little bit trickier this time and do some artworks that are more detailed using watercolors. The aim for the lesson today is to show you a few more technical things to do with watercolor. We're gonna create two artworks that are of the exact same thing and we use the same materials, that is watercolors and Sharpies. However, the outcome is completely different. We're gonna create two artworks of forests. Now, the first one is going to be looking like this. So you might notice that the colors are separate in this artwork. We haven't made the watercolors blend together. We're trying to keep them separated. You can see that the style of this artwork is a bit more playful, a little bit, little bit more abstract, and we've used details in a really fun way. Now, the next artwork we're going to do during this lesson looks a little bit like this one. Again, it's of a forest, however, this time it's a little bit more realistic. The shape of the trees are a little bit more re realistic, and we have a go at using a swipey kind of action to create the trees here. We also have a go at blending the colors together. So come with me and I'll show you how to do both of these artworks now. Today's lesson is all about watercolors. So that is the main material that you're going to need for this task. It does not matter about the quality of the watercolors that you have. It's all about how you use them. So whatever you have at home is fine. You'll also need some different size brushes and some paper to paint on. I use watercolour paper because it's a lot thicker, which is fantastic, but if you just have normal paper at home, that's fine too. I have offered a link for some materials that I like to use in the description below if you'd like to follow those to get your own. Today I'm going to show you two types of watercolour artworks. So I'm just splitting my piece of paper here into two pieces so that I can show you two different techniques. All right. So today we're actually creating two artworks that are of the same subject. We're gonna have a go at creating a watercolor forest, but with one artwork, it's gonna be quite structured and the other is going to be quite realistic and detailed. So I wanted to show you some techniques with watercolors and how you can create a similar subject in two very different ways. So I'm gonna start off with my very structured artwork here. Now, if you prefer, you can draw in some shapes with a pencil, but if you're going to draw anything first, you need to make sure you're pressing so lightly that you can barely see the lines. Watercolor is extremely light and translucent, so you're gonna see your pencil mark if you press too hard. All I'm doing is just drawing some geometric shapes. I've got ovals triangles, doesn't really matter, you can do circles, and they're quite close to each other here. Have a go at playing with the shapes. I've got a long triangle here. Depending on your piece of paper, I'm working in landscape here, but if you have a nice long piece of paper, you'll continue on and fill the whole space with different geometric shapes. So I have five there. You can paint them whatever color you like, but I'm gonna do a bit of a rainbow. So I'm gonna start with my sort of ready pinks and move down orange, yellow, green, blue. Because I think that creates a really nice flow. But in saying that, you don't need to do that. You can do whatever you like. Now, because this is quite a structured artwork, getting these outlines nice and neat, are really it's really important to do that. I'm getting a nice bright color there with my watercolors and now just painting with some water. My second line there is just water, that's all. Might get a bit more paint here for the edge. Like that. 
And now I'm just painting with water once again. The idea is to have something that's not flat. You want some darker areas and some lighter areas here. And the outline is really crisp and neat. I'm going to do that again now with my next shape and I'm going to move down the rainbow order and I'm going to start with orange. So I'm doing the same thing, keeping a nice crisp line there, outlining with a nice strong color. Now my next layer here again is just water. In doing that, you're making something that could be really, really flat. You're making the, the paint kind of play with the water a little bit. So I'm just adding plain water now on the inside and the outer edge will come in to meet the water. So what you'll notice is the outside is quite bright with color and the inside is quite translucent. The paint is more watery, but the darker areas and lighter areas are blending with one another and it makes my artwork look really lovely. An optional thing now is just to add a few little extra pops of color, still keeping with that rainbow kind of idea moving down. I'm now going to just add a few spots careful now I made that little mistake there what I might try and do is turn my mistake into a masterpiece and pretend that was always meant to be there what can I do might not notice that as much anymore. Okay. This is the start of our structured forest. It's not quite a forest yet. It's more just some colors and shapes, but with our fine liner, after our watercolor has dried, we're going to go in and add some details to turn it into a forest. While we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to show you another technique or another different type of forest you could create. And this time you're going to use a very, very small paintbrush. This artwork is all about detail. And so you need a small brush to demonstrate that. I'm going to use abstract colors again, but this time I'm going to have a go at doing some pine tree shapes. Now, all you're literally doing is going side to side, starting small and getting larger, almost like a triangle shape like this, back and forth with your color. Now, when I'm going to the next one, I'm gonna do a harmonious color again, which might be orange, and you can choose to make the tree smaller or taller but the same technique applies. You're going, starting small, and I'm sort of joining these colors together here. Try not to overthink this. The task is to be quite abstract and even though you're using a small brush and you're using little lines it isn't perfect so try not to overthink it the reason I'm using harmonious colors is you can see I'm doing my trees close enough to each other that they're kind of bleeding into one another if you're wanting to keep your trees separate you wouldn't need to worry about doing harmonious colors you could just do whatever colors you like really because they won't blend 
start from the middle, go out, getting longer as you get to the base here. You need to imagine an imaginary horizon line just there because that's where the trees will stop. The actions kind of sweep, sweep from the out, inner, out, in, out. And I've just repeated my beginning color at the end there, just to add balance and weight to it. Notice I have done my trees different heights. I've gone up and down, up and down, up and down like that. If you just did the trees all exactly the same size like that, there wouldn't be a lot of movement within the composition. So having a play with heights is really important because now I'm going to create a bit of a reflection, imagining that they're on a lake here. So I'm getting my color that I started off with here, a very high watery kind of high in water. And just mimicking that shape, mirroring the shape, so it goes down like that. I'm going to do that again with my orange. The orange was a bit shorter, so I need to make sure it's a bit shorter. I might bring this one up a bit. And allowing these colours to blend here. My, my yellow was nice and not nice and tall, so remember, bring it in toward the top there. Now you could choose to add details to your forest here, but I believe it's actually really quite detailed enough because you've got these little tiny little stroke marks here. I feel like that that artwork has enough detail, but if you're wanting to add something of interest, you could always go in and put a little subject in there, give it a bit more. Okay, just doing some fishing. <laughs> Do something like that if you like. But for this one, it does need detail. It's quite plain at the moment and we need to add details with our Sharpie to make these shapes look like a forest. Now, I suggest the first thing you use is a ruler. If you don't have a ruler like me, you could always just use something straight to help you. So we're going to now use our ruler to create straight lines from the very top of each of the shapes down to the very bottom. Make sure they're straight. Kind of starting to look like trees yet. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing with these little dots. I want this one to be behind, whoops, behind this triangle. So when I draw, I'm going to do the line up to my triangle like that and then down below. Can you see how it looks like it's behind this triangle here? You could do this freehand if you want to. However, the idea is for this task to be quite structured. We've used geometric shapes, so you can be a li little bit looser with your lines if you want, but I'm really wanting mine to be quite, quite structured. So that's why I'm using this ruler. All right, so each of my trees here are now becoming a bit more evident and I'm gonna go in and add some leaves to each of my shapes here. What I mean by a leaf is I might do a branch coming off either side here and just add in a bit of a shape like this. So that's sort of the idea now. I'm gonna continue that idea, but change up some of the shapes that I create for each of my trees. If you 
have a thinner kind of permanent fine liner that will work. That is ideal because it means that you're going to be able to get more details when it comes to drawing in some leaves. You can see I'm doing some leaves here that come out and they've got just little patterns in them. You wouldn't be able to do that if your Sharpie is too thick. So I'm sort of mixing it up. I've done some with the thick and some with the thin, but it probably just depends on the type of materials you have to work with. If you're not sure what to do, I just suggest start with a line. So I did sort of parallel straight lines here for my branches. This one, they were a bit more curvy and random. So if you just start with a line and then have a go at creating shapes for the leaves. So I did circles here, these are more ovals. If you mix it up, it gives your artwork a little bit more um, interest and it makes the viewer, whoever's looking at it, look around the page. If it was just all repeated, there wouldn't be a lot of interest to it. You can also add in little extra branches coming off your trees here to fill in some spaces. So now I'm just working on filling in sort of any spaces that are a little bit bare, sort of repeating whatever pattern I've done down the bottom of the trunk of the tree here to add even more detail to my artwork. So I could just keep going, adding more and more detail, but I'll finish there. And I just wanted to show you a comparison of two artworks. They're the same subject, they're a forest of trees using the same materials watercolors and fine liners, but they have really different results based on how you use the materials. So I really hope you've enjoyed this and have a go at one or the other or both. So it's as simple as that. Not too sure which one you prefer doing, but I hope you had a go at both and realize that using watercolor can be quite technical or it can be quite structured. So have a go and please make sure that you comment below with any photos that you've done of these tasks today. I'd love to see what you've done. And please make sure that you subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel because I will be posting some more watercolour artworks in the future. Thanks for joining us. Bye.